Jose, please tell us, how has that happened tonight? Good question. Um, if I forget uh, the last 10 minutes of, of the extra time where we did something to, to get a different result and to go through, in the 90 minutes and in the first half of, uh, of the extra time, was one team that decided to leave everything on the pitch. They left everything there. They left uh, sweat, they left uh, energy, they left blood. In the end of the game, they let even tears of happiness. Um, very humble, uh, very committed. And um, I have to praise them. Uh, on the other side, my team, I repeat, uh, my team, I am, I am there. Um, that didn't look like was playing um, an important match. And if um, for any one of them uh, is not an important match, for me it is. For the respect that I have for my own uh, career and for my own job, every match is an important match for me. And I believe that. Um, for every Tottenham fan at home, uh, every match matters and um, another attitude um, is needed. Um, to say that I feel sad is not enough because uh, what I feel goes much further than, than, than sadness. I just left um, a Dynamo dressing room where I went there to, to praise the guys. And um, I feel sorry that one one team that is not my team uh, won the game based on on attitude, based on compromise. So I feel more than I feel more than sad. Um, and that's it. Um, football is not just about players that they think they have um, more quality than others. Football. The basic of football goes beyond that. The basic of football is the is the attitude, and they beat us on on that. Um, many times, I fear my I fear my thoughts, my feelings, but I don't blame myself in the sense of I always share them. So before the game, I told the players uh, the risks of a bad attitude. I told the players at half time, even with zero zero the risk of um, playing the way we were we were playing and um, it happened uh, because I believe that the players only realized that the game was um, in risk when uh, they scored the second goal and went to to extra time it's going to resonate with the Tottenham fans I know big defeat against Arsenal now this tonight, Jose, what is, compared to the teams you have managed and coached through your career, what is missing in this group of Tottenham players? Where are the winners? I don't think uh, you can expect me in front of, um, of cameras to go deep as, um, as that. Um, I never liked the feeling of some guys in football that say, uh, I won, uh, they lost. I don't like this, uh, this feeling. For me, is uh, uh, we won, we drew, uh, we lost. So I don't go and run away from, um, uh, from that. I'm going to stick with, uh, with that. I'm disappointed of a difference of attitude between one team and another. And I repeat, so I don't want any doubts about that. I feel sorry that my team, I belong to that team. I feel sorry that my team is the team that um, didn't bring to the game not just the basics of football, I believe the basics of life, which is to, to respect our, our jobs and, uh, and to give everything. It's a mighty blow to Tottenham Hotspur as a football club, this, isn't it? And Glenn Hoddle, who, as you know, has got a huge status among the Tottenham support, he said on BT Sport, disastrous and diabolical. Does it hurt you, Jose, to hear that? 
you know, Mr. Rodel, of course, is a, is a legend at the club, and uh, every word that he says, positive, sometimes negative, other times, are to be very, very respected. But I don't need uh, Mr. Rodel's words to feel myself uh, hurted, to feel myself, as I was saying, more than sad. Sad is not, is not enough. Um, I, I totally respect, you know, every everything that uh, somebody connected or not connected with with the club um, says about uh, us uh, tonight um, I think we have to we have to accept the problem is will be if some accepts in a positive way in the sense of feeling hurted and ashamed with with the critics um, another story is if you don't feel it if you don't care if you don't read, if you don't feel it, and that is uh, a much uh, deeper problem. Yeah. I respect and, and, every, and just every to come in on that, Jose, that forgive like me, today. but taking um, that point but on I repeat, board... I, I don't need external critics because uh, I, feel, I feel deeply hurt with, um, with what happened with my team. And taking that on board, Jose, this is the kind of a night, perhaps, where careers change course and you may have to make decisions about some of your players on the basis of what you've seen tonight do you accept that well i accept that but uh we are um we are in a situation where in this moment i i don't want to go uh, especially with you when i say you i say press and i say people at home tottenham fans and uh, football fans. I don't think it is uh, for me to go in that direction. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say much more than than not. I say I, in behalf of my of my team, in spite of maybe some of them, they don't share my my feelings and my emotions. I can only apologize to to the Tottenham uh, supporters and. Uh, and I hope that the players they feel the same way as I as I feel. In Europa League is not the first time. Um, in Antwerp, I had, of course, not a feeling of the same dimension because it was a group phase and we had a chance to 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 win it and and to go through. Today is, of course, live or die, and in this moment we die. But it's a feeling that I I I, I had. Uh, and some other matches I had the same. Had the same feeling, but uh, until the last day of, um, of the season, we we have to try to do our best. Jose, thank you very much indeed. Safe home. Thank you. It's a disastrous result uh, for the club. Um, I certainly didn't see it coming, I've got to say. Um, but to be fair to Zagreb, they showed more heart, more determination in the end. With Orsic's hat-trick, they showed better skills, better technique and ability. And uh, in the end, you've got to say they deserve the win. But Spurs were, were diabolical tonight. They really were. Yeah, we're bound to look at it, obviously, from a, a Tottenham perspective, an English perspective. But Tottenham have contributed to their own downfall, haven't they, tonight, for all of the good play from the opposition? Yeah, well, they have because, uh, you know, in the first leg, it could have been three or four that looked more than comfortable. We always knew it would be slightly different in this game, but you felt like it was coming. You know, right from the, from the first kickoff, there was no impetus. There was no, you know, they weren't quick in their passing. They weren't dynamic in their closing down. And, and Zagreb just grew into the game, but Tottenham allowed that. So credit to Zagreb, you know, with all due respect there, they played very, very well. And... and I have to say, they were the better team. Yeah. Obviously, when you're playing with a 2 0 lead, it is that, that balancing act. But they mm. just they got it wrong, didn't they? They got it I wrong know. before Zagreb got their noses into this match and this tie, and I, then afterwards, they fell apart. I think mentally, they've got it wrong right through the mm. game. You know, I, said at, I said at half-time, saying, like, well, if, if Zagreb score, then I'm expecting a reaction from mm. Tottenham. The game would open up, they'd have a nibble, but I didn't expect Zagreb to actually then take control of the game. That was Spurs' opportunity to respond make that response as a team, individually. And they went backwards. They went downhill instead of fighting against... Mm. Hang on, they're, you know, don't give them any glimmer. They're back. If not, you know, they were just playing at the, at the pace that they wanted to play at. They should have upped the gears and gone through the gears. They didn't. There was not enough ability in the team 
or, or anyone on the night that was going to say, I'm going to take responsibility here. I'm going to change this game for us. Everyone was looking at each other. And that can happen. And when it happens, it's, it, it's a disaster for a team. You're looking at each mm. other and you're saying, you know, you need leadership. And Hoybier not playing tonight mm. just shows you what they do need. He's had a great season, Hoybier. Suspended, massive miss, because I think some of the, the, the goal, the key goal, he would have been in that defensive position. But I think he's one that actually leads them. Right. He's the one that actually is always talking to players and he's demanding. Uh, they missed him big time today. They really did. I mean, you've both worn the shirt with pride. It's been a, the worst possible week, hasn't it? Yeah, well, they haven't turned up in, in two games now. Two and you have to games. say that. And, um, you know, players have gone missing. You, you, you talk about when they went a goal down, we thought we'd see a reaction. You know, the subs came on and for a little minute there, you thought, you know, they're breathing life into the situation. And then, you know, we saw players hiding. We saw players hiding. We saw players not tracking back. We saw some simple passes not being made. Uh, no creativity. You know, the keeper played well, made a couple of good saves. But having said that, you know, Zagreb were the, were the better side in the game and, and deserved to go through. And that's, a, you know, disastrous from, from Tottenham. And you do wonder where their season is going now. And we're out, I'm afraid, of this season's Europa League. Beaten 3 in all the night and therefore 3-2 on aggregate by Dinamo Zagreb. That didn't look possible, frankly, a week ago at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, but it's happened, Glenn and Peter. Obviously, we'll uh, get reaction as soon as we can from, from Zagreb. There are three good goals from a Zagreb point of view. They're, they're nicely worked, beautifully mm. finished in two of the cases. Great night for Orsic and his hat-trick, but mm. wow, the defending. Yeah, no, listen, you, we can pick holes out of, out of Tottenham, but first, you've got to congratulate Orsic, Orsic for one. I mean, it's unbelievable. what about this for a goal? I mean, listen, the defending is nowhere near it. Um, you know, the, on, the, on, the, on the second two, definitely on the second and third goal, but that, I mean, is, is, is unstoppable. What a finish. Mm. Here's the second, Glenn. Uh, yeah. Again, well worked, but Sissoka, perhaps on this occasion, the most culpable. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, no disrespect, he's not in the team to, to pick passes and that, so he's in the team to defend and become that extra, that extra defender when you need him. He's let him run from, that, from deep, Orsic, and he's had the, the freedom there. You see Bow, look, that's not good enough. You've got to really, look at that, there's no determination. The tackle from Aurier yeah. is a schoolboy tackle. Yeah. He's turned his back on him and flicked it, look, there, look, flicked his back. That is horrendous tackling. Great finish, I've got to say. It's a beautiful goal, yeah. defensively there, you know, Bale stopped running. Uh, Oreo stuck out a leg, you know, it's just so, there were so many opportunities to make a tackle. And he's run through them all and, and, and credit to him, it was a great finish, but, sure. but defensively awful. So why is that happening? Is that on the coaching pitches? Is that the, the players themselves not taking responsibility? Is that like a confidence, tiredness, what, all of those things? What is it? I, I, I come back to Oibier, I think you need someone in, out there that's going to dig people out and, and do it way before that happens. You know, they had no one there that, of that leadership. I only saw Dyer at the very end when he had to flick one back at, for a corner actually get annoyed and he started screaming at a few people. There was no leadership there. They had no heart pumping through that team. It, everyone can have an off day. Mm. Of course you can. Too many have had off days against Arsenal altogether and tonight altogether. But you cannot... Yeah. You can still actually have a desire. You can still put your foot in. You can still, you know, have a verbal with each other. If I have a go at you, I might just get you to play better. Mm. And if you have a go at him and, and, and get him playing, then you suddenly lift your team's levels. There was nothing. Everyone's head was down. It was like, someone else do it tonight. I can't do it. If you play like that, you've got no chance. It is that, it's that terrible Spursy tag that follows them around like a bad smell. It's another one of those, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, I mentioned uh, before the break, you know, you see where, where's the season going now? And they've got a League Cup final, um, which is, is becoming the, you know, the most yeah. important game. And then Jose Mourinho can turn around and say, you know, I've, I've, I've won a trophy, but are Spurs fans going to be happy with the trophy and, then, and, and playing this kind of football? And listen, it's only two games. Um, you know, I mean, they were, they're not they, going to beat Man City playing like that. Well, exactly. You know, how, and, then, and then it's another nothing season where, they, where it feels like they've gone backwards. Yeah, they do. They, exactly. They feel like they're going backwards at mm. the moment, which is... That's not great no. for manager or players. No, of course. The last two performances, you've got to say they've gone back. They're not, tre you know, they're not treading water. They've actually gone backwards, but they've got to look at themselves tonight. There wasn't enough heart there. There wasn't enough real desire. When the match... And then when you, uh, you put yourself under that pressure, then go and perform under that pressure then. And they didn't. They went, they got nervous. People were kicking the ball up in the air. They were just doing... There was ridiculous things happening. They just lost... They lost the plot. 
but they also lost the, 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 their heart. They lost their desire to do something about it. Sometimes you can get back into a game, not by a silky pass, which we were hoping for and looking for, or a wonderful goal. You get it by pure hard work and someone making a tackle, the ball spins off to someone else and you get a bit of luck. And that's how you get back into a game. And that's what they were needing tonight. But they didn't deserve it mm. because they didn't put the effort in. I, I just felt they approached the game in the wrong way. I know they were 2-0 up, but it felt like they were, they were just going there to sort of easy, not, not concede. Yeah. Um, whereas I felt you know, the, the best players Tottenham have got are attacking players, players to, to, to take it mm. to, to opposing teams. And I think if they'd have gone for you know, one, possibly two, it would have just killed them straight away. But they grew in confidence and then they paid the ultimate price. Yeah. I, I've got to say, from that first, first leg, how dominant they were and how they... There's no way I could see Zagreb actually performing like that anyway. So, it, to a certain degree, we got caught. We got caught yeah, ourselves. Yeah. The difference was we weren't out on the pitch. <laughs> you know, you had players out there that could do something about it. I couldn't see that from that Zagreb team, Peter. I don't know about yourself, but from what I'd seen in the first leg, you know, this was a game to get beat 3-0, to get beat 3 from a very, very average team. They had, Orsic was unbelievable on the night, but other than that, it's an average team. It's no more than that. Mm. And, and that is the real concern, I think, flying back tonight when they, the players and the management will be thinking, we haven't played a very good side here and we've got to beat 3-0. Yeah. Where, where does this leave, Jose? Obviously, it's these players that have gone out and lost this game. He's picked a strong team, in fairness. He's made changes during the game to try and affect it. And no one's really stood up and be counted, but it'll hurt him, won't it? But some Spurs fans... I've never really caught fire with, mm. with Mourinho, and this doesn't help. Well, listen, I speak to Spurs fans a lot. You know, I've got a lot of friends who are Spurs fans, and they're, and they're not happy. The last two games is, is, is a North London derby where they, they lost with a, with a whimper, really. Uh, and going out of Europe tonight, you know, there's, this season's hanging by a thread. Like, when I look at someone like Harry Kane trudging off the pitch there, and I think it's Champions League, he shouldn't even be playing this competition. He's a Champions League player. He's a player that should be there. Talk about Lewandowski, Haaland, Mbappe, Kane. He's up there with those. He's gone out to Dynamo Zagreb today, and that's the worrying thing. It's like, where does that? Where, where's his head at? Um, you know, not just the manager, but the, those players, Son, Kane, players who deserve to be playing at a at a higher level than the Europa League. Uh, and yeah, of course they're loyal to Tottenham, uh, and we all hope they will be. But games like that certainly don't help. No, and Harry in fairness to him, has been at Tottenham a long time and has talked more than once about, I need, I need to win trophies if I get yeah. the chance in my career. And he's 27, 28 yeah. this summer. I mean, he is at a crossroads. Of course, of course he is. And I think that's, uh, you know, the club to a certain degree has been at a crossroads this season on the Harry Kane and possibly Son even, you know, on, on that story because it's, they're running out of time. You know, there's a League Cup final. You can't put all your eggs in, in one basket on a football match. Yes, you can win that game. Of course, they've already beaten City uh, once this season. But, you know, they're a very good side. Probably the best team, them and Bayern Munich, in Europe. So they've got to play every single... Where every single player was so poor tonight and on, on Sunday, they've got... Every single player's got to be 9 out of 10. Now, to produce that at Wembley in a cup final, you just don't switch it on like that. Yeah. You just can't do that. So they could still win that trophy, of course, but... Would that save the season or would that paper over these cracks? Well, would it save the season? Yes, it would save the season because if they didn't win it, if they don't win it, where's the season going to end up? What's it what's going to mm. be like then? He's been brought in. Jose's been brought in to, bring, to win silverware. Yeah. He's got to a final. Whether the fans like it or they don't like him, they're, at a, they're in a final. And for that day, they're going to support their club. Mm. They're going to want to beat City, and if he wins a trophy, for the long term, it might not be the right thing for the club, but he's been brought in, and if he wins the trophy, it's a hard task, but if he does, yeah. that will actually say, well, look, you have brought me in, let's go from there. And don't forget, for every Spurs fan out there, if we did win it, that's the first trophy he won for Chelsea, was the League Cup. Mm. You know, it didn't just happen, first of all, the Premier League, and then it was that was a step, you have to start somewhere, and... and, and you know, that could be a stepping stone. We're miles away from that say, at the yeah. moment. Absolute yeah. miles away. But you've got to be optimistic. Hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah. And they'll have to not only defend an awful lot better against Manchester City in that final than they did tonight, also need to take their chances. They did create some chances tonight, both in the 90 minutes and in extra time. Pete, not loads, and they weren't amazing, but... Yeah, they did. I mean, this was the... the, the best period really yeah. when they made the changes Bale came on it was a lovely bit of skill from Gareth Bale and you know Jink backwards and forwards put a lovely ball in and yeah you, you back Harry Kane to score that and uh, 
And again, Bale there with a snapshot, but it was too little too late. They should have been doing this from the first minute. Mm. Yeah, they should. They should. And that, oh. that one, wow, it just doesn't quite either fall to Vinicius or Harry Kane. Yeah. It just panicked a little bit, Vinicius. It did come to him quickly, but then Harry Kane, how many times have you seen him in that position? Yeah. He smashes it in that near post. It was a great save again, but it was one of them night. That's the desperation. That's when pressure comes on you. That down there, he's yeah. rushed it. There. Mm. That one, OK, there's bodies on the line. It's a wonderful, wonderful save. And then the last one, Bow even might have put that in the top corner, but you're under pressure. And they've caused that themselves, gone out and played. They're 2 0 up. Yeah. You know, to get beat by that team 3 0, I just, I just couldn't see it coming. But it has happened. Mm. It's a hard, hard lesson to learn, but my word, they've got to, they've got to show a lot of character now for, for Villa at the weekend. Yeah. And, and to get something going again to actually give them a self a chance in that League Cup final. Yeah. I mean, Glenn pointed out the absence of Hoiberg and the absence of leadership, but mm. elsewhere in other, in other teams and in Tottenham at other times, when someone's missing, others fill the void, don't they? They stand up and be counted, whether it's psychologically in yeah. terms of leadership, the, 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 the kind of standards mm. they set on the pitch. Who else but the captain and glimpses from the captain is really showing that in in the Tottenham machine. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Hoiberg is, is a miss, but there's more on, on that pitch to, to, to be able to cope with that. Um, I'll go back to my point again. I, I still think the best players in Tottenham side are, are attacking players, so I feel that you need to take the emphasis more to, to the team you're playing against, and I don't think that happens enough. Defensively, I don't think... Tottenham are, are, good, are good enough to sit back and soak up pressure. Um, I think defensively they are found wanted at times and, mm. and the best players are going forward. So they need, what they need to do is, is just attack teams more. And that, that's just not going to happen yeah. with Jose Mourinho, I'm afraid. I think the question before the game is, how do you think we're going to get through? Do you think uh, an away goal is going to get us through? Yeah. Or do you think a clean sheet? Well, you all thought away goal, didn't you? Away goal. Yeah. But, but the team didn't play like that. No. It looked like it was just going to go through the motions and say, look, we're 2 nil up, let's keep a clean sheet and we get through. Instead of saying, well, the away, the away goal will just yeah. kills the tie-off.